President Biden's re-election campaign swiftly responding, as you can imagine, to the guilty verdict today, saying, quote, no one is above the law. For more on Biden's response, I'm joined tonight by Peter Alexander, who's live for us tonight. So, Peter, talk to me about how they're sort of balancing this, right? Because this is a little complicated because the, the president has made it clear they had nothing to do with this case. But yeah. the campaign wants to remind voters this just happened and this was huge. Yeah, so Tom, let's walk you through this, right? We're not expecting to hear from President Biden about Mr. Trump's conviction tonight. That's what we're being told. He's in Delaware right now with his family. This is the anniversary of his son Bo's death. The campaign, though, did put out that statement. They say the conviction shows no one is above the law. They add that there is still only one way to keep Donald Trump out of the Oval Office. They say at the ballot box, they add convicted felon or not, Trump is going to be the Republican nominee for president. The White House putting out a very short statement. They say we respect the rule of law. The campaign and the White House, they've largely steered clear of commenting on this trial, but amid frustrations about the sort of wall-to-wall -wall coverage making it harder to break through with its message this week, the Biden campaign, you know, deployed Robert De Niro, two of the police officers who were attacked at the Capitol on January 6th to speak at the courthouse. We saw De Niro trading insults with Trump supporters there. But to your question specifically, late tonight, a Democratic strategist familiar with the campaign's thinking is telling us that in their view, a conviction is better than an acquittal, but they say it is not going to be a central message for the campaign. We should note that the campaign did immediately start fundraising off it. Ultimately, they say that President Biden's going to need to convince Americans that Mr. Trump's chaos and lawlessness, in their words, is, um, is not just bad for Mr. Trump, but also bad for Americans' lives. The bottom line, though, Tom, and I think this is, this is really the view privately, is that they acknowledge they they don't think that either way this is dramatically going to change this race. They think this isn't resolved until November, in effect. All right, Peter Alexander. Peter, I have one more question before you go. You know the president so well. You know the former president so well. We have this debate coming up at the end of uh, at the end of uh, June or July. I'm, I'm losing the calendar June. now. Yeah. Um, but we have this debate coming up. Do you think this becomes a large part of President Biden's strategy? Does he remind voters that? We're talking to a, a, a convicted felon here. You're going you're gonna to like the convicted felon. Do you, you think that becomes part of sort of the language we hear in this campaign? I, I think, I mean, the White House privately, or excuse me, campaign officials privately say they don't think it'll be a big part of the campaign. They'll raise money off of it. They'll try to motivate their base off of it. But they recognize this thing's going to be decided at the margins, Tom. And to do that, according to a senior campaign aide that I spoke to just within the last couple of hours, they think this still comes down to the key issues that they have to sort of zero in on with voters, issues that we have discussed that they have said multiple times before, the topic of democracy, the topic of abortion rights, and really uh, what they view as not just the economy, but in their language, trying to demonstrate to Americans which one of these candidates cares most about the middle class. At the end of the day, that's what's going to motivate voters in their eyes. There could have an impact on the margins. Some independents have said this could sway the way that they vote. But really, they need to get Americans to care about what's in it for me, not just how it affects Donald Trump. Peter Alexander with new reporting tonight for us. Peter, we always appreciate that. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.